Custom functions are used to simplify repetitive code. They are required in some applications, for example, when using numerical methods to find the parameters that maximize a likelihood, or when using numerical methods to integrate a function. The key components of a custom function are the keyword def, which is used to start the function, the keyword return to indicate the value or another object to return, and consistent use of whitespace. This lets Python know when the function has ended. Whitespace is used to separate code in the function from any code that comes after the function is finished. Python is whitespace sensitive. This means that lines must be consistently indented. The level of indentation indicates the scope. In later lessons, we will see that whitespace will play an important role in for loops and if-else blocks. A function definition begins with the keyword def. This is followed by the name of the function. The third element is the list of function inputs. Python supports both required and optional inputs. In this example, x is required since there is no default value, and y is optional, and if omitted, we'll use the default value of 1. The function declaration ends with a colon. The body of the function comes next. The body must be indented relative to def. The standard indent is four spaces. It is important to use spaces and not the tab character, and it is essential to not mix tabs and spaces, which will produce a syntax error. Most Python-focused editors automatically convert the press of the tab key into four spaces to avoid this. Finally, the keyword return is used to tell the function what value or object should be returned when the function is called. You can return one or more values from a function, and if multiple outputs are provided, then these are formed into a tuple. Let's write our own function that evaluates the likelihood of a normal random variable. The likelihood function can be seen in the rendered markdown. This function depends on three values, x, mu, and sigma squared. These are our parameters. We're going to use NumPy, so we'll start with importing this. We can start by writing the signature beginning with def, followed by the function name, normal likelihood, the three parameters are then listed in parentheses, x, mu, and sigma2, and finally a colon indicates the declaration is complete. Moving on to the body of the function, we must use consistent indentation. I always use four spaces, which is the Python standard. We can break this function into small components and then assemble these into the likelihood. First, we can assign the value of the leading ratio to a variable. a equals np dot square root of 2 times np dot pi times sigma 2. NumPy provides an accurate representation of pi and the square root function. Next, we can compute the squared error as b equals x minus mu, parentheses, squared. Star star is the exponent operator in Python. Then, c equals 2 times sigma 2. Finally, the log likelihood is 1 divided by a times np dot exp, the exponential function, of minus b divided by c. The final thing we need to do is return like. We need to run the cell with our function so that Python knows it is defined. Next, we can run it using some standard values, x equals 0, mu equals 0, and sigma squared equals 1. 
This produces 0 0.3989. We can check this result with SciPy Stats, which contains the normal PDF. We first import SciPy Stats, and then the function is stats.normal.pdf. The function arguments are nearly the same. The only difference is they are x, mu, and the square root of sigma squared, or just sigma. SciPy calls this parameter scale. Printing the results of this function shows the value is the same. This lesson concludes with a couple of exercises for you to try that combine some material from the lesson with material from earlier lessons to produce some useful functions. Functions begin with the keyword def. Values return must be preceded by the keyword return. Function code must be consistently indented. It's important to remember that Python is white space sensitive. The recommended practice is to use four spaces to indent. It is important to not use the tab character to indent lines, and if available, configure your editor to convert a tab into four spaces.